Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley Hanna. I'm the Moody Reader and today we're doing my July wrap up and this wrap up is going to be, I don't know if chaotic is the word because I feel like I read a lot of things and I enjoyed a lot of things so it might be manic because of the amount of fun I had reading this past month but it was also a bad month because like you know life stuff happened so uh I think that was the lord's way of saying here have some joy while you you know roll around in your turmoil a little bit but regardless had a good reading month I read this stack of books plus a couple of ebooks um an arc that I got um, given by NetGalley. So that was really amazing. It was one of my favorite authors. So I got to read that book and I'm just really, I'm feeling really blessed right now. That's all I can really say. I'm feeling very grateful. So uh, a lot of these books have videos that I read them in. So I will link those videos down below. There will also be timestamps for when certain books come up in the video. So if you like that kind of a thing, check out the timestamps. Okay. I read, what are the stats? My stats for this month are that I read this many books and these are the um, genres that they fall into. And yeah, I read a lot of good, a lot of good literature. I read some classics, which I have not done steadily this year. So that was really amazing. And, and yeah, I think I read every book on my TBR. So um, enough chatting. Let's just get into the video with more chatting. You know what? I'm going to start off with the books that I felt the most for. Let's start off on a really good note. Like the month started off. <laughs> so, um, I read The Will of the Many by James Islington this past month, and I gave it five out of five stars. This is probably a six star book in all honesty. I have a reading vlog for it. This book it took me out of reality. It made me completely want to like just abandon all responsibilities, which was not great, but it did. And it's fantastical. It's, um, it's, it's an adventure. It, the, the main character himself really, um, he captured me. And this is about Viz Telemus, who is an orphan um, in the Cadenan Republic. And he has been tapped to become a double agent and infiltrate the um, the hierarchy's prestigious school and go there and basically find out all the secrets, all the things that his adoptive father wants him to know. And um, yeah, I have a video on this. It was, it was great. I loved all of the characters. I loved the world. I loved, even though I didn't understand a lot of the magic system, which is these are um, will users, I still don't understand a lot of it. And there were some questions I had even towards the end with um, the usage of the will and with how the end itself worked. So I have questions. I'm eagerly awaiting the sequel, which I don't think is coming out this year. So I'm a little sad about that. Um, but I really enjoyed it. It's such an adventure and uh, it gave me all the feelings I had when I first read The Name of the Wind or um, The Gentleman Bastards trilogy at this point, since I don't know if we're getting a fourth book. But it's just, it's, I, it's a book that I have an attachment to. So five stars. I loved it. The next book that I have an emotional attachment to is Things You Save in a Fire by Catherine Center. And um, I did not expect to love this book so much. In fact, I picked this one up on Kindle Unlimited, so I was reading it on my Kindle, and then after, like, honestly, toward the end, um, I hadn't even finished it yet, I picked up this copy. I had to order it. I was like, I need to read it. I need to read it physically. I need to have it with me, um, and I need to go back and tab things because I had a lot to say about this one. But this one is about uh, Cassie, who is a firefighter, and... She is uh, famously known for not wanting any romance to come anywhere near her. And um, so when she ends up having to be transferred to a different firehouse states away from her own, um, she ends up living with her mother to take care of her. 
And she ends up, of course, having to rethink those, um, those old ways of thinking. Um, this book, it, this book was really great for me and it hit really deeply because I love any book that has to do with, um, your parents and, um, the way you interact with them in your adulthood. And, and I love books that have stuff to say on forgiveness and, um, and hope. I don't know. I'm a real sap for that kind of a thing. So this is really, um, this one really hit me hard and it was just, I wasn't expecting it to be so emotional because I had read, uh, Catherine Center's The Bodyguard and I liked it. It was good. Like I read it this year, give it four stars. And I didn't think that she could do any better. I don't know. The writing was like, it was, it was a rom-com and this one is not a rom-com. This one is very dramatic and, um, and yeah, it, it deals with some tough subjects. So I would say that there are some trigger warnings, but I don't want to talk about them because I feel like that would be a spoiler. Um, just know that this one is very emotional and, um, and also very inspiring and also just, like, it's thrilling. Like she's a firefighter. She's a firefighter. She's stronger, um, emotionally and physically than a lot of people. So I just, I love the main character. I love her love interest and, and yeah, I, I love this book. Five stars. The next book that I would like to talk about is You Belong With Me by Vari McFarlane. Um, if you've been on my channel for any period of time, you know that I love Vari McFarlane's work. I will always read her book. She's an autobi author. She is um, uh, an author that writes, I don't know if you could call them romances because the romance is not the main focus in most of her books. It is a soft romance. If you're looking for a hard romance with like overt physicality and sex scenes and um, just that being the forefront of the novel, then you're not going to like her work. But if you're looking for a quiet romance that just has to deal with life in general, it's I'd say, I think of it more as just general fiction, honestly. Um, I don't tend to even find her books in the romance section when I go to bookstores, but you Belong With Me is the technically the sequel to Who's That Girl, um, which was another five-star book of hers. I love that book. I wish I could get it in the States. I can't find it, so I only have it on my e-reader. But um, the first book, Who's That Girl, focuses on our main character, Edie, and she has just been basically exiled from her job because she was found kissing the groom at a wedding. And uh, she ends up being put on a, a case because she uh, she's a writer of what I can't remember at this point. But she's been put on a case to ghostwrite um, an autobiography for a famous man whose name is Elliot, Elliot Owen. And uh, their romance starts there. Like They're the romance in that book. And then that book ends off on, spoiler alert, a cliffhanger. And so this book, we get the what happened after the epilogue in that story. And so You Belong With Me follows Elliot and Edie and them trying to make things work. And um, I was feeling like this was going to be just a novella. I don't know why I thought it was going to be that. It is not. It is a fully fledged book, but I do think that it... It benefits from you reading the first one, so I wouldn't say you don't need to read it, but I would say if you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, we get more of their friend group, just a little bit more. Their friend group really like um, fades into the background a little bit more in this one, and we mainly focus on Edie and her coming to terms with the fact that her boyfriend is famous, and she... Edie has a lot of imposter syndrome, so she's really having to deal with her insecurities, and I loved that we looked at them, we talked about them. I also love Elliot. Elliot, Vary McFarlane writes superior men. I love her male love interests. I love them. I want to marry them. Um, I am 27 and single, so if she'd like to write me a husband, girl, go for it. Um, and there was drama in this book that I didn't think there was going to be. And I loved it. I love like petty little dramas. So this book, I knew how it's going to end, but I still was like, how is it going to end? What's going to happen to my babies? So I just loved it. I loved it. Five stars. I love Vari's work. 
I love it. And thank you, Ari, for not leaving me on that cliffhanger. And thank you, NetGalley, for giving me the arc because it doesn't come out in the States till September. So um, the next book that I read and fully loved was The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. And this is this is more like a self-help fiction. It's not really uh, it's not really your typical story. It's it's very much so a tale of like finding your purpose and it's a tale of perseverance and this is about a boy named Santiago he is a shepherd herder what's the word for that he is a a shepherd boy he's just a a little shepherd boy and he is living an ordinary life and one day he gets told by a gypsy that he needs to go and find his treasure and so that he does. He goes on a whole adventure and learns a lot of life stories. And this basically is just saying, um, go out and persevere. You can do it. Like find your treasure. Don't let anything get you down. Like, and that you're going to encounter downs right before, like the lowest lows before you find the highest highs. So I enjoyed the journey. I actually enjoyed a lot of this. It did slog in the middle of it, which is unfortunate because it's such a short novel. But the more I thought about it, I gave it like a 4.5 when I first finished it. The more I thought about it, the more I was like, I vibed with so much of this and it made me think about my life in a like step back third person perspective point of view. Um, that I had to give it five stars. It was just such a such a thing I needed to hear at that moment in time. So, um, yeah, I I love this book, five stars. Um, and then I also read My Dark Vanessa by who is this by My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. And this is a book that is about um, some really heavy topics, and um, it does. Uh, full disclosure, it does make you feel very icky and unsettled, but it's about, um, a, it's about two different timelines. One is in 2000 where we have our main character, Vanessa Y, and she is in a boarding school. She's 15 years old and she begins to, um, start a relationship with her teacher whose name is Jacob Strain and he is 42 years old. And then you have the other, end of this story which is in 2017 and the allegations have begun coming out against her old teacher and this book has to do with her reconciling with what happened to her in the past and also realizing uh, how that's affected her in her future and having to just having to be truthful and honest with herself because she feels like nothing has happened. She's upset at first about all these allegations because um, her teacher did not just stop with her. He was kind of a, this was, this was his thing, obviously. And I hate to say that I enjoyed this novel because it is so, um, so uncomfortable to read. Um, and it's part of the reason why I don't think I'll ever read Lolita. I have a copy, but I don't think I'll ever read that book because I don't think that I'll like how I feel because there are books that you read them and and you if you're not in the right space reading a certain book and being inside people's minds can make you um it can put you in a dark and deep place so that's part of why I like reading and it's part of why I hate reading because it can really affect you mentally and so um it was just really icky to be um in Vanessa's perspective, not because she did anything wrong, but because um, she justifies everything to herself in the past. And that was just, it was, it was tough to read. Um, But yeah, I understand why this book is so popular. I think it's a book talk book. Um, Yeah, it was really enthralling. I couldn't stop reading it. I read it in less than 24 hours, but it was really difficult to read. Um, but yeah, so gave that book a four, 4.5 stars. Um, and the next book that I read 
I reread, on a lighter note, I reread, um, what is this? Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I love this book series. It always brings me back to when I was a kid and my older brother would read them to us and he would, like, we would get them on the day they came out and he would, we would all have parties in our room and we would just, we would just kiki with um, Harry Potter. And this one is the third book in the series and I'm doing a reread. So next month will be um, the Goblet of Fire. But in this book, we get my main man, Sirius Black. I love me some Sirius. And um, yeah, this book, I'm not going to really dive deeper into it because it's it's Harry Potter. Um, whimsical, magical, uh, all of the little intricacies that are in this book and like the little, like Fred and George are my favorite part of any Harry Potter book. I love them. Those twins are amazing. So um, yeah, love the levity, love the whimsy. And this is pretty much the last book where things aren't too serious and too deep. So it was just a good time. When I get into the fourth of the next month, we're going to get into some deep, some deep doo-doo. So five stars again. All right. The next book I read was a classic and I have a video for this one up. And I read Crime and Punishment, why do I say it like that? Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. This is a classic, like I said, and it was a very interesting time reading it. I enjoyed it. Um, There were some moments where it was a little bit slow, but overall, I give it a 4.5 because, um, well, if you don't know what this is about, this is about Raskolnikov, and he is a student, one ex-student. He can no longer afford to pay his bills, so he decides to murder um, the pawnbroker that no one really likes in the neighborhood, and the consequences of this are that his conscience really eats at him and he kind of goes crazy and he just tries to isolate himself throughout the novel. But there are twists and turns that I was not expecting. Um, This is also a romance I did not know until now. (laughs) So this was very, um, it was fun to see um, just all the ins and outs of classic lit that if you haven't read it, you're like, what's the big deal? Why do people keep talking about this? Like, I know why people keep talking about it now. Um, the themes in it, the the ideas that Raskolnikov has, because he is, he's like a um, an intellectual, I guess, and he has certain ideas about crime and punishment. And that really comes across in his daily life, obviously. And while Raskolnikov was not my favorite character, there are some characters in here that really, like, like, um, one character. There's one, like, integral character that, you know, when he gets introduced in the story, the story just takes off, it shoots off, and he, like, being inside some of the minds of these characters, it just makes you feel crazy, and you're like, ooh. So the writing that Dostoevsky did in this novel was A-plus material. Um, yeah, I, there were also some really funny scenes, like any time that Katerina Ivanovna spoke, I just had to go, you're funny, you're quite funny lady. Okay, so yeah, 4.5, really enjoyed it. Now we get into some not so fun territory. Um, I did not enjoy the rest of the books in this video. So let us, let's start off with another classic because I kind of did enjoy this one, kind of didn't. I read Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte, and I mostly did not enjoy it. This is about Heathcliff, and he is, um, he's walking around Wuthering Heights, being crazy, and it's the tale of him and Catherine, um, and their, I don't know, their history together, and what happens to their lineage in the future. Like, it's just... I just felt like it was a book about petty people, and I loved Emily's writing style, but I feel as though she was trying to write this as if it was a romance, and it clearly wasn't. It's clearly a tragedy. I don't know. Did she write it thinking it was a tragedy or a romance? I don't know. I don't know. But um, it's it's a classic tale of a toxic romance. And um, there were characters that I fully enjoyed in this novel, and I just felt like they were done dirty. And I just, I can't get over Heathcliff. 
I can't get over him as a character or Kathy as a character. I can't get over the two of them. It was wild. I can't say much more. Um, yeah, three stars. The next book that I finished was uh, One Dark Window by, who is this by? Rachel Gillig. And I really tried to like this novel. I really did. Um, and it had all of the elements that it needed for me to love it like it's fantasy it's a world in which like the the magic seemed really cool um it's about this girl named Elspeth Spindle and she because of an illness in her past and an illness that can take over most of the land like if you get this illness people um you tend to get taken in by the what are they called I think they're the Destriers I don't know they there's an illness that goes around and if you get it like you're basically basically doomed and she gets this sickness and consequently she ends up having this monster reside in her head and the monster is she calls him the nightmare and because of this she has to end up helping the captain of the Destriers. So there's a little bit of treason and um, there's a romance and you'd think that I would like all these things and it reminds me of card captor Sakura because there is like this card business that happens in it and I feel like it could have been good if the characters hadn't been so two-dimensional. Um, I just The only character I really enjoyed was Elm. He was the only one who felt real to me. Um, and, and yeah, every other character was just really boring. I don't know, man. I don't know. And the word choice that the author made was a little bit sketchy sometimes. And then even when we had some good twists and turns, I will show you dramatic reenactment right here. I was not impressed. So, yeah, I I should have cared what happened at the end, but I didn't. After I finished it, I was like, okay, I don't know if I'm going to start the sequel. I probably will not because it just it didn't capture me. Sorry. The next book that I felt absolutely nothing about was The Midnight Feast by Lucy Foley. Um I didn't like this book because it felt like all the other Lucy Foley's I've read, but in a really bad way. And this one is about this luxury resort that's built and it's being built on this land that of course people don't want to be built on. So there's protests happening all while there is um, the opening weekend for this resort. And at the end of this weekend, somebody will end up dead and we don't know who it is. So the whole book we're like, who is the person who died? But we all know who it's gonna be. Like if you're if you're really paying attention, you know who it's gonna be. And there are a bunch of um, suspects because everybody at this place has an agenda. Um, and and yeah, this one, like I said, I don't have too much to say about it just because it was so much so like another Lucy Foley. It was like a cross between the guest list and the hunting party. Like, she has her certain tropes and beats that she makes with each character, and they just kind of keep on happening. So, um, and I read this for a 24-hour readathon, so it should have been, like, the perfect circumstance, but this one just was kind of boring, and I just, I was surprised I was able to make it through, quite frankly. So I gave this one, like, a three at most. The next book that I read was... Every Time I Go on Vacation, Someone Dies by Catherine Mack. And I thought I was going to love this because it seemed like um, everyone in my family has killed someone by um, Benjamin Stevenson. But it is not like that, my friends. Not at all. This one is about this author named Eleanor. And she 
um, is known for writing this series with um, a character in it that is based off of someone she knows in real life. And when she ends up going to Rome, she goes to Italy to write her book and to just have a good time, honestly. Um, She ends up wanting to kill off the main character, Connor, um, because she doesn't like him in real life either. But all the while, someone, he comes to her because someone's trying to kill him. So that's the plot. This book has a lot of footnotes, which if you like footnotes, like I should have liked this book. I, I dig footnotes, but these were so, there were so many of them and they were so important. Like she, the author says, the author of this book says, you don't have to read them, but you really do to have all of the information to solve what happens when someone does get murdered. You really do. And I just found the main character, Eleanor, to be really annoying. Um, This book has not a lot of interesting characters. The author herself, Catherine Mack, doesn't actually describe characters. She takes the lazy way out. And if you want to know what a character looks like, you have to look in the footnotes. So there was a character that's black in this novel that I did not know was black until 100 pages after the character showed up because I didn't know who the actress was. And that shouldn't be on me. That should not be on me to know every actress or actor in the world. I don't care about actors. Um, And there were a lot of Taylor Swift references, which if you like Taylor Swift, I guess you would like this book. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not a Swifty, so it didn't really, it it wasn't really my jam. Um, And yeah, and so by the time anything happened and someone died and we got the, the who done what, I just was checked out. So... I expected this to be fun, and it was not fun. So I gave it like a 2.5. And the last book that I read, which was the worst book I think that I have read all year, was... Sorry to all the girlies out there that love this series. Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. This book was tragic. This book was inane, and I have no problem going on a revenge tour about this book. I hated this book because this book is about Magnolia and BJ, and they are two, I think they're adults, with too much time and too much money on their hands. They're in a relationship that is on again, off again, but mostly off again. Um, because of something that happened in their past. And so they basically just keep getting jealous and trying to make each other jealous over them being in relationships with other people. And there's nothing much more to this plot. I don't understand this book or why it got sequels. I don't understand. The one book, the one character that I liked in this novel, her name was Bridget. She's the only one with sense. The other characters just seemed like they were props to... Like, none of the characters seemed like they were important. There's, like, a whole friend group, and they all seem inconsequential. They're all there just to, um, just so that the main characters have people to talk to. Um, it was incredibly repetitive. Incredibly. There were things that I was like, I feel like that happened ten pages ago. Why are we doing it again? And the, there's, like, a fake dating thing that happens, And I was like, yo, these people are too old to be doing this. And then the writing itself. I did not like the writing. I didn't jive with it. Um, The main character is like a fashionista, but she basically just lists off what people are wearing when she meets them. So I don't, if you've noticed with my fashion on this channel, I don't care about fashion. I don't care about it at all. I don't care about brands. I don't want to read just the play-by-play of what that girl over there wore and why it was a fashion don't and it the fact that it happens with every single character that the magnolia sees it was excessive so i really didn't like it and then at the end i was like no absolutely not do not dare do that to me jessa jessa don't do it and she did it and that's the only reason why this book has sequels so i 
was not a fan, did not enjoy it. The last thing I have to say, and probably the funniest, is that the Goodreads, I was looking up the Goodreads stuff, the information, and when I scrolled to the bottom, the genre says romance, blah, 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 fantasy. That is the funniest thing I've ever seen because it is a fantasy. This is fantastical. This is not real life. Okay, yeah. It says it all right there in the Goodreads uh, genres. That's all I got to say. Okay, so those are books that I read. I don't know if I did any of those um, reviews justice, but basically this is not a review because I have videos on almost all of those books. So I think now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just give you a little TBR of what I want to read next month. First and foremost, I would like to read 112263. I want to read it, and um, it's by Stephen King. I am like two chapters in, and already I know I'm going to love this, so I just want to buckle down and just like get into it. It's chunky. I could kill somebody with it, so I'm, oh, I'm a little um, concerned that it's going to take a while, but I'm okay with it. Um, and the next book that I would like to read is another chunker. I want to get to Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. And this is my brother's copy, so thank you, big bro, for lending it to me. Um, yeah, I have never watched the series. Well, no. I think I watched one episode for five minutes, but then I saw a nipple. So I said, bye. <laughs> I said, bye. Um, but I do want to know what the hype is about for the book series. And, and yeah, I want to, I want to be in on the loop. I mean, since I read The Lord of the Rings, I feel like I can read anything at this point. So yeah, I don't very, I don't know very much about this except for the fact that winter is coming. Um, another book I would like to get to. I, in a moment of weakness, I bought the next two books in the, um, Red Rising saga i bought dark age and lightbringer i want to try and read dark age uh, full disclosure i did not enjoy iron gold but i've been told by friends that it gets better so i want to continue on pierce brown hopefully he's got my back and won't do me dirty um the next book that i would like to read which is the most likely book to happen because it's a reread is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire book number four in the Harry Potter series. I am on track to finishing my reread of the series but I do need to keep doing a book a month. Um, so yeah I want to read this. Duh. And then another book series that I most likely we'll get to because it's YA and fast and fun is um the books two through four in the naturals series by Jennifer Lynn Barnes I got them on kindle I did so I need to read them and I really liked the first book the naturals so hopefully I can just like shotgun these in a weekend and and yeah I just Jennifer Lynn Barnes knows how to write a love triangle and that's all I'm gonna say Okay, um, I'm sweating like a pig, so I'm going to leave you here, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you like. Um, I am actively trying to get to a thousand subscribers, just to see if I can, so thanks for watching. If you got this far, comment, comment the sunglasses emoji, just because. Okay, bye.